Welcome to Periodic Table Layout. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about how the periodic table is organized, as well as what the major groups of elements are on the periodic table. So here we have our periodic table. The first thing we're going to look at is what these rows are called, the rows going across the table. And so these rows are called periods, because it's on these periods that the properties repeat themselves. So here we have the first one, the second one, the third one, all the way down to the seventh period. Now these two down here are actually in the table. So they don't count as their own rows. We can also look at elements going top to bottom in columns. These columns of elements are called groups or families of elements. Groups are generally more interesting to talk about because elements in the same group share similar properties to one another. So groups are numbered a little strange. There's actually multiple systems of naming groups. I'm going to show one first that's actually a little bit out of date, and then I'll talk about what the more current system is. But the old one still has one small benefit to it. So this older system starts with the first group as being labeled 1A. The next group is labeled 2A. Now the third group is down here. We have 3, but this becomes 3B. And all the way over here, we start 3A. The numbering continues from there. So this becomes 4A, then 5A, 6A, 7A, and the last one is 8A. The B numbering continues the same way. 4B, 5B, so on and so forth, and actually gets a little weird at the end. We're not going to really worry about that, but suffice it to say that this block here, as well as these rows that sort of stick into it, are all the B block of elements, and we call those transition metals. Sometimes you'll see the main block referred to as transition metals, and these two rows called the inner transition metals, because they sort of stick into the transition metals, they're inside of it. They're called transition metals because they transition from basically the left A groups to the right A groups. So let's write that down. The B block of elements are transition metals. That's the name for that category of elements. Let's look at some of the other uh, named categories that are, that are important to be aware of. So we have the first group all the way on the left, that's the 1A group. 1A elements are referred to as alkali metals. The next group, the 2A group, these are called alkaline earth metals. The other two notable groups are on the other side of the table, 7A and 8A. 7A is right here, and these are called halogens. So 7A are called halogens. 8A the last group all the way on the right side are called noble gases or inert gases. We call them that because they don't react with any other elements. They're inert, they don't react. The other A groups are typically called families based on the first element. So for example, 4A is the carbon family, 5A is the nitrogen family, 6A is the oxygen family. But the reason I showed you this numbering system, even though it's a little bit out of date, is because these numbers in the A format are actually pretty helpful. If you look at the format, some number followed by an A, so number followed by an A, the number tells you the number of valence electrons for elements in that family. So what does that mean? All the elements in 1A have one valence electron. All the elements in 5A have five valence electrons. 7A have seven valence electrons, and so on and so forth for all the A numbered groups. Now the B block isn't so helpful in how it's numbered, and it actually gets pretty confusing. So these days, there's another system of numbering all of these. And it's actually very straightforward. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
18. So dot, 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 you can fill in the rest, you get the idea. It's just numbered 1 through 18 without any sort of change in, in numbering pattern. And this is what we have now, it's a lot more straightforward. But it doesn't give you that helpful uh, idea about what the valence electrons are in a particular group. That wraps up our lesson on the periodic table layout. We talked about groups and families. Uh, we talked about how you can determine valence electrons from the group number. And we also talked about what some of the names of those groups are. Any questions you have from this lesson, make sure you write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.